love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always Namaste friends Today is the very first lecture that we are going to be seeing about AWS Cloud Computing This is Amazon Web Services I've actually described what is this AWS and other cloud services in this lecture uh, Before we actually get into the lecture Last week we actually talked you know to investigate what is a capex and what is an opex <clears throat> so a capex is a capital expenditure and an opex is an operating expenditure so the capital is what you actually invest in order to get anything running is called a capital and the operating is the operating expenses now say suppose if you want to buy a restaurant the capital investment is buying or leasing a land a place uh, <clears throat> you know all the equipments which is needed in order, in order to run a restaurant, you know, in the kitchens and all those things. And the operation is day-to-day -day expenses such as paying all your employees, the food, uh, you know, all those things. <clears throat> so imagine if you want to do everything by yourself, how much it would actually cost? It's a lot of money, right? Whereas AWS or other cloud providers, which is a platform or service, when they actually give their platform, the capital is actually taken care of and the operating is also more or less taken care of and you actually pay for the a la carte meals like what you actually do so having said that uh, i trust it will actually give you you know a better explanation of you know uh, of what a capex and opex is and how it is actually affecting the cloud let's actually get into the lecture and let's actually see what an aws and what it actually offers all right let's let's take a deep dive i must say friends today we'll be actually seeing the very first lecture about aws cloud computing aws is amazon web services so last lecture, what we actually saw was what is a cloud computing, why it is actually picking up the stream, uh, and why it is going to be important and you know stuff of that nature. What are the advantages it actually gives? And we also like ended up with a quiz, which you know uh, I answered in the introductory uh, video. So uh, there are at least three major main uh, you know players in the cloud mar market. One is Amazon AWS, Amazon Web Services. The other is Microsoft Azure, and the third one is Google, okay, which is GCP, okay. So GCP is Google Certified Professional. So friends, if you are actually certified in any one of these three, in one of the highest certifications, uh, it, it gives you a very good chance to enter into the job market. Uh, it makes you a lot more competitive. It gives you a very good chance. So the coming series of lecture, I'll be concentrating in AWS, Amazon Web Services. The reason is I am six times certified in Amazon Web Services, uh, you know, and then Azure is also there and I've not gone into Google, but it is, you know, you can be multi-cloud, uh, but it'll be interesting to start somewhere and that is what that is what it is. So throughout the series, what we'll be seeing is the different technical aspects of Amazon and appreciate you know what it can actually do to us and you know and and the various options actually provides us all right uh, so the agenda for today is what is uh, an aws global infrastructure what is an availability zone and data center what are regions what is an edge locations and how we can actually visualize them and what is your responsibility and the aws responsibility all right so this is what we'll be seeing so basically this is the global infrastructure. So what is a global infrastructure? Infrastructure is basically like, you know, as we know, hey, it is spread across, okay? You know, infrastructure of a country is pretty good. The railways is good. The road base is good. The airways is good and stuff of that nature, right? So the same thing in AWS as a global infrastructure is how AWS is actually placed across the globe, okay? So uh, this is the Asia Pacific region, okay? Uh, throughout the series, you will not be missing two concepts, okay? Two, two, two terminologies. One is the region, the other is an edge location, which has been marked like here okay the edge is in blue and you know this you know this is in this orange color all right so we'll be seeing what they are and just look into this in mainland china they have three availability zones in singapore region they have three availability zones tokyo they have four in sydney you know which is in the australia area they have three in mumbai they have three hong kong they have three uh you know these are the regions okay so having said that okay this is just like a part of uh you know a, you know the the aws global infrastructure okay this is a part of the global you know infrastructure so this is for the asia pacific now let's actually come to north america so north america we all know the us okay uh so other than the us you know there is also canada all right 
So the moment North America comes, many people should be very familiar of, hey, New York, hey, California, uh, Chicago, okay? Some of the commonly used states and, you know, very famous states from a tourist point of view, because I was once a tourist uh, till I came here. But you'll be surprised, the headquarters of AWS is in the place where I live, which is Northern Virginia, okay, which is here. And if you actually go to the AWS, if you actually say everything is actually taken to the Northern Virginia area first, okay? So this is the availability zone. Uh, and then we have California, we have the Ohio, uh, you know, and uh, we have Canada, uh, you know, so this is a global infrastructure for North America. So other than North America, we also have South America. And I'm not sure what immediately comes to your mind when you say South America, for me it is Brazil. So, you know, in Sao Paulo, you know, region, there are three. Okay, it got launched in 2011. Okay, so it has been 11 years, but still it is fairly new and then picking up the market like crazy. So now we have actually clustered Europe, Middle East and Africa. Okay, so Europe, the moment we actually come, you know, we'll be thinking of France, Germany, Berlin, uh, you know, and stuff of that nature, London, you know, in the stuff of that nature. We have Ireland, we have Frankfurt, Germany, we have London, Paris, as I told you, Stockholm. And uh, in the Middle East, we have Bahrain. Uh, we also have Italy, Milan, uh, and, uh, you know, in Africa, we have South Africa, which is Cape Town. If you just notice one thing here, friends, all the availability zones, but for Northern Virginia, it is all more or less three or four maximum. Okay. So now actually, let, let's actually get into deep dive. What is this availability zone? What is this region? Why are you confusing me? The availability zone is nothing but a data center. Hey man, very complex. What is a data center? No worries. A data center is basically, as, I mean, you know, let's actually put it, the center where the data lives. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to be funny here, but I know it was not funny. Okay, the data center is, imagine a room full of servers. So back in the 90s, you know, when we actually, when the internet actually came in, we used to hear the server is down, okay and you know the server is not working so the website is down so data center is basically a room which is actually full of servers and also logically grouping them together okay there can be some high-end servers there can be just some minimal servers which is only serving static website which is not that very expensive like you know the gaming servers or the real-time servers but imagine a room which is actually full of servers okay imagine something like this okay a data center one two and three okay so this is called and uh you know an availability zone which is nothing but a data center all right now what is a region a region is a geographical area. India is a region, okay? Uh, India, Singapore, North America, so, you know, put together Asia, Pacific, China, Hong Kong, okay, these are all regions, Europe, Africa, and, you know, so these are all regions which we just saw. And each region, it actually consists of minimum two or more availability So. So the availability zone is a data center, the room full of servers, at least two or two or more. And this is a region, okay? Availability zone A, availability zone B, availability zone C. So this is AZ, 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 all right? So not much, not complex here, right? Cool. So what is an edge location? Fantastic. Now we are actually getting into the weeds. So the edge location is, <laughs> now say, suppose I'm in India. I'm actually accessing a server in America, okay? And that too, like say I'm from Chennai and I'm actually accessing a server in California. The geographical distance is a tyranny, right? It's cruel, right? So what they do is the commonly accessed files, they actually put it in an edge location as a caching, okay? It's called cache, okay? Not C-A-S-H, which is money. It is C-A-C-H-E, okay? It's called caching. Okay, so the edge locations or the endpoints for AWS that are used for caching. It is basically used for CloudFront and Amazon Content Delivery Network. Don't worry if you don't get it right now. I will surely be explaining this in the coming series. AWS, Amazon Web Services is an ocean. So once you actually dive into the ocean, be, be ready to be a good swimmer and it'll be fun as well. There are currently over 215 edge locations. Always remember if I'm actually accessing a server which is actually out of my nearby country, 
like say I'm watching cricket in ESPN cricket for or or any anything for that matter. How was it I'm able to see it on a real time basis when the match is actually happening elsewhere? But right now I'm actually watching it from Virginia, which is happening in Mumbai. How was it I'm able to do it? I'm pretty sure they have a lot of edge locations where it has been cached and you know real time you know, kinesis. Okay, th those things come in handy later. Uh, so this is the way you have to be visualizing. So this is the edge location. So when you actually buy your server and try to go on the cloud, go global, your responsibility is you're going to create security group, IAM users, IAM is identity access management, which I'll be covering probably in the next lecture. Okay, EC2 is a server, minimal server, so operating systems. Okay, and the AWS responsibility is they manage the data center, which is a room full of servers, you do not worry about it. The disaster recovery, the security cameras and you know the patching so encryption which is needed encryption if you see my blockchain video i've actually said what an encryption is so encryption is a shared responsibility again friends i'll be extremely happy if you can actually add me in linkedin or follow me and i can be i'll be in a position to answer any of your queries regarding your growth uh, certification process and also you can also go and read my blog spot where i've actually explained things a lot more in detail Happy learning. Thank you. Namaste, friends. Uh, I trust you have actually enjoyed my, the lecture. Um, if not, please leave me your comments and I'll, I'll strive hard to improve myself in order to give you a better quality. For the first lecture, I think it will be good if you just know three things. One is an availability zone, which is quite easy to remember. Region, which is even easier. And always start thinking if I'm able to retrieve something fast, where could be the edge location? So I think it is a good start with this. And next lecture, we'll get hands on with AWS, you know, how to get into the AWS universe and you know what are all things which are actually existing. All right. So I want to thank you for giving me your time and also want to thank my wife Jayashree for allowing me to do this in order to follow my passion. Till we see you next time. Cheers. Take care.